It's Craft Beer Week in Chicago, and what does that mean? That means there's a bunch of great beers coming out this week. $4 taps all over the city. Everybody's going to have a blast. We're here at the Goose Island Fulton Street Tap Room. Mm -hmm. Place opens today. Let's go inside and take a look. Let's check it out. All right. Abdul Hassan, and we are talking today with Brian Legro. He's one of the brewers over at uh, the Goose Island Fulton Street uh, Brewery over here. Uh, if you could just talk really quickly about how it, how um, you guys opened the tap room, and you know what what you guys are trying to get out of it. Well, I think obviously having Goose Island a Brewery with its background and the time we've been around, that it was just kind of a natural fit that we needed to have a tap room to bring more people in and uh, I think one of the great things that we're going to get out of this is uh, introducing more people to Goose Island um, and maybe solidifying uh, the hold that we have on our fans right now and um, maybe even just bringing more people and new generations as people get older and get more familiar with the brand um, and introduce them not only to the beers that we've been making for a long time but newer beers and innovative beers as well. Yeah, I mean, you guys are getting into a bunch of new stuff. I mean, talk a little bit about what what has kind of changed. I mean, you, you, you started off with, with these really core brands, and now it, you're really sure. kind of experimenting a lot and making a lot of really cool stuff, which I'm, I think we're all really excited for. I mean, it's, I'm really excited right. for the future of Bruce Island. Yeah, and it's, it's great to have that base of the beers that we've been doing for a long time. Uh, but, you know, at a, at a certain point, you kind of branch out, you know, see how the market's going, how tastes change. People get more familiar with the different styles, whether it's domestic or international. And uh, we definitely want to, you know, be a part of that and show people that, you know, we're able to make these styles. You know, we've been doing good beers for a long time, but we want to continue to show people that, we can innovate, we can do new things, we can uh, compete with other people that are very popular out there. Awesome. Brian, what about, like, what's your history as a brewer? How did you end up here? Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I think my story is kind of similar with a lot of people. You just fall in love with a lot of different brew st beer styles and you just start to think, well, how can I get into this? You know, where can I fit into it? And uh, I eventually came across the Siebel Institute here in Chicago. I applied and was waitlisted for, I think about a year and a half before getting in in 2013. Um, so I finished the Master Brewer program there in July of 2013. And I uh, was quickly hired on by uh, 1090 Brewing Company of Design. I was there for about 14 months. And uh, actually a number of the guys that I was in class with in Siebel were working here already. And I kind of heard through the grapevine that there were some openings, applied, and uh, eventually got in about seven months ago. Awesome. Yeah, it's been great. So I know that you guys just got a, a new um, master brewer over here, and uh, he how's it been working with him? I know he used to work at uh, New Glarus, I believe, right? He was one of the head brewers over yeah. there. Yeah, it's it's been great. Uh, it was great working with Brett, uh, our previous brewmaster. Uh, great guy to work with, and uh, one of the guys I actually interviewed with when I, before I started. Wow. But uh, working with Brett's been not Brett, but Jared's been really great. He's uh, very boots on the ground, very interactive. Um, definitely, you can you can tell he misses being in it. Yeah. You just you get that feel from him. But, uh, you know, he's definitely uh, as excited as we are pushing out new brands, trying new things. Uh, our pilot system that went in, you know, definitely working on uh, as much new stuff as we can. So I see that we got here, we got your, your uh, Goose IPA along mm -hmm. with the newest beer that you guys just came out with. Yeah. The Goose Fulton Street Blended, uh, or Blend Coffee Ale. Um, why don't we try these guys out right here and, you know, we talk a little bit about the notes and, uh, you know, what, what has inspired you guys to really do this? Yeah. So 
uh, we're here, you know, we're trying the, the Goose IPA. You guys won a ton of uh, Gap Awards for this. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, actually, surprisingly, I haven't had this in quite some time, so it's going to be a nice refresher for me. Um, yeah. I mean, what, what kind of notes do you expect to get out of this? Uh, well, we're using uh, predominantly English hops. Um, I think they're a little bit underestimated, especially in like the American market right now, where it's People just citrus, it. just yeah. kind of in your face, which is yeah. great. Uh, I definitely love that, but uh, English hops can be a little bit more restrained. Um, you get some earthy, some spicy, and that fruity citrus as well. So it's it's a little bit more balanced, uh, but it's it's definitely something uh, that's nice to have in more drinkable beers, summertime beers. Yeah. yeah. Well, cheers. Let's uh, let's try this bad boy out, I guess. You do get more of that kind of, um, you get mild citrus going on, but yep. not overpowering like those West Coast hops that you exactly. have. Uh, a lot more well balanced, in my opinion. Uh, amazing IPA. Yeah. I mean, you guys really hit it on the dot right here. It's not too dry either, so it's still it's still pretty refreshing, and uh, it's not overly malty either. You know, you don't have any caramel malts kind of screaming at you. It's just kind of a nice, nice, well drinking beer. And what's the um? Like the grain bill look like? This is uh, just a uh, two row two -row malt. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's I pretty basic. Yeah. You can tell it's yeah. pretty golden color, not too dark. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think you said it already. There's just, you know, it's really just easy to drink. It's nice. It's clean. Yeah. Very, like, crisp finish. You know, I can see why y'all have done well with this. <laughs> definitely, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. yeah, you you guys deserved all the hype that, uh, that came with this beer. Um, very well crafted, those English hops. You know, you're right when we talk about there's a lot of really bad connotation. Or I shouldn't say bad connotation, but kind of in, in the American market, people look at English hops like, oh, that's English hops, you're gonna get, it's gonna be very bitter and it's, you're not gonna get those, those, uh, they, they want, everyone wants juicy. Yep. And they assume oh, yeah. that, that English hops won't give you anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think this beer right here will prove everyone or any critic wrong because I this is impressive. You. Yep, absolutely. Well, how, how long has this been part of the like lineup for Blue Sound with the IP specifically? It's been around for a number of years. Yeah. Um, I would think that, you know, with our starting off being uh, English beers and mm -hmm. Belgian beers uh, for a long time, that um, I don't know the exact date. Don't tell my bosses, but uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate you letting us know about this beer here. Uh, I'm mean, very excited to try the, the Goose uh, Fulton Street Coffee Ale. Oh yeah. I mean, I I've heard a lot of good things already, and it, it just been out only for a couple days. Exactly. So uh, yeah, let's let's try this out. All right. Uh, this is this is outstanding. No. Uh, you guys, like I said, you hit it on the dot again. But Thank I think you. what a lot of the viewers are really trying to figure out here is the bourbon counting. 